Forget missiles and megatons, the world's most dangerous weapon may now be a chip. What? That's right. China has just dropped a quantum bomb on the global tech stage, and it's called Zhushongzhi 3.0. This isn't a software update or a new iPhone, it's a paradigm shift in computing power. Hey guys, welcome back to QuantumFi where we break down the mind-blowing tech shaping tomorrow. Today we're diving in to Zhushongzhi 3.0, a quantum computer so powerful it makes Google's Sycamore look like a relic from the stone age of silicon. So buckle up, smash that like button, and let's decode how China just might have hit warp speed in the quantum race. Before we begin, flashback to the quantum supremacy wars. Let's rewind to 2019 when Google claimed to have reached quantum supremacy with its Sycamore chip. At the time, Sycamore completed a highly complex task in 200 seconds, a task Google estimated would take the world's fastest supercomputer roughly 10,000 years to solve. Wow! Beautiful! It was a jaw dropper. Critics were divided. Some hailed it as the dawn of a new technological epoch. Others dismissed it as a PR stunt that proved little outside a lab. Fast forward to 2025 and China didn't just step up to the plate. They built a whole new stadium and knocked the ball straight into orbit. Enter Zhushongzhi 3.0. Meet Zhushongzhi 3.0, the quantum monster. In March 2025, researchers at the University of Science and Technology of China revealed their latest creation, Zhushongzhi 3.0, a superconducting quantum processor boasting 105 qubits. So how powerful is it? Let's put it this way. It executed a computational task in seconds that would take Frontier, the world's top classical supercomputer, approximately 6.4 billion years to complete. Billion, with a B, that's older than Earth. And it didn't just match Google's benchmark from 2019, it obliterated it. Zhushongzhi didn't just solve the same problem faster, it tackled a more complex version and still finished in a fraction of the time. That's not just progress, it's a quantum flex of cosmic proportions. How the heck did they do that? So what's under the hood? Zhushongzhi's 3.0's architecture features a 15 by 7 qubit lattice and 182 tunable couplers, allowing it to achieve deep quantum entanglement. But that's just the skeleton. The muscle lies in its fabrication techniques. The chip is constructed using a flip chip design where two chips are bonded face to face. This allows for ultra dense interconnects with low noise interference. Materials like tantalum and aluminum were chosen specifically to reduce charge noise and improve coherence times. And indium bump bonding? That's what ensures mechanical precision and thermal efficiency. As per performance, Zhushongzhi boasts relaxation times, T1, up to 72 microseconds, and dephasing times, T2, reaching 58 microseconds. Single qubit gate fidelity clocks in at 99.90%, .90%, while two qubit fidelity hits 99.62%. These numbers are not just improvements, they're record setting. This wasn't brute force computing, it was surgical precision, quantum finesse. Quantum computing in 20 seconds. If this all sounds abstract, here's the core idea. Classical computers calculate one solution at a time. Quantum computers don't play by that rule. They calculate every possible outcome at once using a phenomenon called superposition. Picture flipping 83 coins at once. A classical machine would evaluate each result one by one. A quantum processor, it sees every outcome simultaneously. Now tie those coins together so that flipping one affects the others, that's entanglement. Put both together and you get an engine that can process reality itself on a scale we've never even seen before. But wait, is this useful yet? Now, let's bring it back to Earth. The benchmark used to prove Zhushongzhi's power was something called random circuit sampling. It's not going to solve climate change or cure cancer, at least not directly. It's more like flexing out at the gym. You're not lifting weights to solve a problem, you're proving strength. But strength matters. Zhushongzhi 3.0 proves that quantum supremacy is no longer just theory, it's happening. And as systems like this grow and stabilize, the real world applications will come fast. Drug discovery that used to take months compressed into hours, artificial intelligence models trained in minutes, not weeks, cryptography rendered obsolete overnight. The quantum age is no longer a distant goal. It's being assembled gate by gate, qubit by qubit. Quantum threats, is your data safe? 
Here's where things get a little unsettling. If quantum computers grow powerful enough, they could break today's encryption protocols, the very ones protecting your bank accounts, your emails, even national security data. Zhushong G 3.0 can't do that yet, but it just proved that we're on the path. Governments worldwide are scrambling to build post-quantum cryptographic standards, trying to future-proof digital infrastructure before it's too late. Make no mistake, the quantum arms race isn't just about computation, it's about control. The Quantum Avengers, who built this thing? Zhushong G 3.0 didn't come from one lab. It was built by a consortium of Chinese research powerhouses. Teams from the University of Science and Technology of China, Hefei National Laboratory, Shanghai Research Center for Quantum Science, and Quantum Sea Tech Co. joined forces along with more than 10 national and institutional players. This wasn't an experiment. It was a coordinated national mission. A technological moonshot backed by serious political will. Why this is a tech wake-up call. While China's building at breakneck speed, the US is still debating whether to renew the National Quantum Initiative Act. Europe, meanwhile, seems content watching from the sidelines. This isn't just a tech race, it's a modern Cold War. Only this time, instead of warheads and satellites, the weapons are qubits, algorithms, and AI training cycles. Welcome to the Quantum Era. Zhushong G 3.0 may not yet be cracking open the secrets of the universe or rendering CPUs obsolete, but it set a precedent that cannot be ignored. The next breakthrough could come from a lab in Boston or from a quantum server farm hidden in China. What's clear is this, the quantum revolution is no longer theoretical, it's operational. If your brain's buzzing, hit like, drop a comment. Is China taking the lead? Can the West catch up? Should we be worried? And make sure to subscribe because next time we're diving into Google's quantum AI hybrid project and IBM's new roadmap for fault tolerant quantum machines. Until then, keep your minds open and your qubits cool. This is QuantumFi, signing off. <laughs>